Welcome to the Disruptive Social Care Podcast with social care provocateur and social media queen Shirley Ayres and myself Stuart Arnott, founder of Mindings, a service dedicated to bringing social media to the disconnected. In this weekly show, we aim to spread the word about what's going on in the world of disruptive social care, amplify the voices of people with great ideas that few people ever hear about, help our communities connect and collaborate, and interview thought leaders across the sector. Shirley, hello. Show number 14, and I can tell you we have had over 3,000 listens and views. Every week it's going up. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm delighted and fascinated in equal measure. <laughs> well, I'm delighted at the numbers. I'm just fascinated why people want to watch us on YouTube. <laughs> But they do. Well, people say to me they watch because they find it very inter- entertaining, the interactions between us, I have to say. <laughs> well, I'm glad about it. If people haven't watched it yet, I mean, every week when we do, when I edit it, I do add extra visual material on there. So I've been putting, when we talk about websites, I'm putting grabs of the websites and the Twitter handles and putting little pictures so you can see who it is we're talking about on Twitter. So every week I'm trying to add a little bit more to actually make it more visually stimulating. Well, this may sound very sad, Stu, but I actually look forward to it. <laughs> What, watching yourself? <laughs> I know. I said sad, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you <laughs> and our guests. <laughs> so what's been up? Well, yeah, exciting times. I'm looking forward to the imminent publication of my provocation paper, which has been commissioned by the Nominette Trust, which explores the challenges of developing new models of support for people using digital technology. Do you know, I read over 55 reports and research papers uh, written by 33 organisations to inform the paper. It was a lot of reports. Were they all talking about the same stuff? The recommendations, well, I mean, I was looking at you know, sort of how older people are accessing the internet, um, what are the implications for digital technology, how can we make websites more friendly, information to advice and guidance. Um, but, you know, underpinning it all was, was this sort of whole issue about the importance of people accessing information, support and advice. And the fact is that we do not have, at the moment, one easy location where people can find out about about what's happening with innovations in social care. Um, and that's a real deficit, I think, above everybody, everything else. Um, and it's taken 55 papers to conclude that. Hmm. Wow. Yes. And um, partly to, um, to address this information gap, production has started on my guide to digital technology ideas to transform social care. Now, we're publishing this as both an e-book and um, a hard hard copy book. And uh, I'm very encouraged that we've already had advance orders um, for, the, for the publication, although I don't yet have the publication date. Okay, well, sounds like you've been really busy. <laughs> <laughs> and you? <laughs> well, Ian, my mindings partner in crime, and I have been locked in a dark room again, as we do every now and again for the last couple of weeks. <laughs> and I'll be telling you a little bit more about that later. Um, but also with uh, with my wife's new business launch that I mentioned other week, the briefing, uh, I filmed that and the show. Um, with the show, of course, that we're doing now being weekly, um, I've been doing an awful lot of video editing, <laughs> and I'm going a bit cross-eyed, which my mum told me would happen if I watched too much television. <laughs> So, Shirley, what's on the agenda this week? Um, well, this week's show features e-patient engagement, uh, dementia challenges in the news at the Dementia Congress, is age really the issue in later life, mm. uh, National Adoption Week 2012, um, when is social not social, and my current favourite passion, a social impact, um, <laughs> bridging the gap between research and practice, Digital literacy for social work students, although, of course, this has applications for all students as we prepare them for, you know, a a connected society. Um, Why are there so few women media experts? Oh, that'll ruffle some feathers. (laughs) (laughs) At Techno Kitten. (laughs) (laughs) And um, digital technology in later life. So that's just a snapshot, actually, Stu. Fantastic. Well, since we've got a full agenda, so let's crack on. Okay, so... The E in e-patient stands for engagement, says Susan, at Susanna Fox. Now, Tom Ferguson coined the phrase e-patients um, to describe individuals who are equipped, enabled, empowered and engaged in their health and healthcare decisions. He had a vision of healthcare 
as an equal partnership between e-patients and health professionals and the systems that support them. And that applies equally to social care. You know, one of the big challenges we have, what should underpin individuals feeling safe, supported, valued in their communities, social care, health, housing. Um, And integration remains a huge challenge. But unless we can get resources directed at um, supporting people to live more independent and fulfilling lives, we will continue to have a big problem. Absolutely. Um, Lovely post from um, At Whose Shoes, who shared some reflections because she and actually quite a lot of the dementia challengers were at the Dementia Congress this week. And so she gave a quick A to Z of of random thoughts and also reflected on the groundswell that is called Dementia Challenges. And, you know, before we've we've talked about um, Jill and that lovely post, you know, changing dementia one tweet at a time. And it seemed very obvious from following the conversations that dementia challenges is really becoming an important part of the agenda because it's the voices of people who have real life experience of living with it day by day. Jill also wrote a lovely post about her mother which we're worth going to uh, to her website as well. I'll put the link on the screen down there just now. Uh, and that was well worth it. It was a lovely, lovely piece. Well, you know, I I, I mean, her, her, her mother blogging about, uh, about technology raised some really interesting issues about, you know, what are the benefits of technology versus um, the continuing need people have to, to connect with people in real life. Um, so, you know, I, this is actually a shout out for Jill's mum. <laughs> Well done for your blog. Yeah, and stop correcting my Latin, Jill. (laughs) It sets Shirley on you. (laughs) Um, And and then sort of following on the the theme about um, age and and, and technology and and adapting, um, a lovely post from at Annika Small, who's the chief executive of the Nominate Trust, is age the real issue in later life? And she's considering the challenges about what actually needs innovative thinking and also making comparisons between the transitions that both young people and older people are confronting. You know, young people leaving home, um, going to college, starting work, older people retiring, possibly moving to supported housing, um, bereavement. I mean, it really definitely worth reading and worthy of much bigger debate. Definitely. And a useful reminder that this is National Adoption Week Um, and helping people understand the difference that adoption can make in a child's life. And it was really good to see that um, at BAF Adoptions, uh, Chief Executive Officer David Holmes was hosting a Twitter question and answer about adoption this week as part of the National Adoption Week. So it's really, it's good to see how people are using social media to connect and communicate um, well done to at Bath Adoption on this one. And that's great. A tweeting CEO, in fact, more than just a tweeting CEO. Absolutely. Doing a Q&A, well done. Yes. Um, social investment and social impact, as you know, continue to fas- fascinate me. So I was really interested to read um, Poised for Impact, written by at David Social SP. And this was exploring what the newly published at Nestor Impact standards of evidence mean for social enterprise and impact investment. And there are a lot of issues that are still to be resolved around the purpose of social investment and and thinking about the return on investment. Is it just financial? Is it about the social impact? Is it both? And, And how this is going to be demonstrated And Nesta have mapped out an approach called Standards of Evidence, which explains how they will judge whether the ventures they're investing in are making a positive impact. And so the standards range from level one, which is a potential investee can clearly say what a product or service does and why this may have a positive impact on one of our outcomes in a logical, coherent and convincing way, right up to level five, where it is clear that the product or service can be operated by someone else, somewhere else and on a large scale, whilst whilst continuing to have positive and direct impact on the outcome and whilst remaining a financially viable proposition. 
I think this is great. This is one of the most difficult things to do when you're Absolutely. filling in an application for funding is where you're expected to demonstrate ROI. And it's yeah. nice to actually have something straightforward, uh, an indication of uh, how you can yes. do that. Yes, and, and, and I think we need more of this. And, and, and I suppose, you know, one of the other things that fascinates me, um, as we're asking um, not-for-profit social enterprises, demonstrate your social impact, yeah. um, maybe we also need to be asking um, publicly funded bodies and, and, and councils to say, how are they demonstrating outcomes and social impact? Well, that would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that would be very interesting. And, and, and in a sense, that leads, leads on quite nicely, actually, to, uh, to my, my next thoughts about what is a social business. And I attended what was a fascinating debate with, um, with a quite complex title, I have to admit. Um, the Social Hydra, the practical emergence of the social economy and the challenges it builds for public good and private profit, which was held at Westminster Hub. And a very thoughtful summary of the issues raised about when is social not social. You know, there is a huge debate about what constitutes a social business. So recommended reading from at um, AOG Den Newton, chair of the Transition Institute, um, and do have a look at the hashtag Social Hydra because I think it is a you know there's a lot of people who believe they're social businesses, but I'm not sure that we can compare the work of AFRI and the and the work program with a small social business like your own. So it is interesting. Yeah, or a lot of the, the micro providers. Um, if you look at absolutely people like Comcats who yes. support a lot of um, a lot of uh, micro providers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who, who, as far as I'm concerned, when I when you look at them, when you look at the impact they have, it's enormous. What what they can do, you know, we talked about this before, but what they can do with ten thousand pounds seems to be the yes. equivalent of what large public bodies can do with a hundred thousand pounds. Absolutely, or even millions. Dare I suggest? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and introducing some kind of ROI indicator, and that will be interesting. Oh yes, oh yes. Um, so, sort of looking, very interesting debate actually we've had about uh, about whether students need to be digitally literate. Um, oh, yeah. Should that be, you know, a fundamental part of university education? Um, and so it was interesting um, when Akeley sixty five shared his approach, which combines Facebook and inquiry based blended learning, which is teaching social media skills uh, to social work students. And a really, a really good video which actually um, explores how they encourage students to use Facebook. Um, they got feedback from students, you know, what, what they learned from it. And it really, to me, reinforced the need for, especially in social work and social care, um, for, I mean, not just students, but for everyone to have digital literacy. Oh, definitely. This is the future. Even just in the last day or so, the, um, the, the rape victim who was named by somebody on Twitter. Yeah. And people didn't realise that, that that was literally breaking the law. Yes, yes, um, and there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of that, a lot of people who are uh, defaming and libeling people online and uh, people have been locked up for that. It's serious, yes. very serious issue. Well, I, you know, I, I, I think there's a sort of, it is understanding professional boundaries, but it's also not frightening people from using social media, yeah. um, helping people to use it appropriately and sensibly because it is such a powerful tool. Yeah. So I love this contribution to the debate. Yeah. And another, well, which may be controversial, I don't think it is actually. Um, why are so few media experts women? And do you know, you can now sign up and share your expertise through the women's room. Um, and a hat tip here to Icon CEO for drawing it to my attention. Uh, the women's room has been established by at Planet Kath, Catherine Smith, at Week Woman Caroline Criado Perez and at Vogel Beer, Yvonne Abubaro, and that provides women with a collective voice. And they've got a database sortable by region as well as area of expertise which the media can access. So there is no more excuses from the mainstream media about being able to access the expertise and wisdom of women. I find this fascinating because, in my experience, when my other hat is somebody who's worked in marketing. Um, uh, the, the vast majority of people, and it may be just the kind of industries I've worked in, um, there's been a lot of um, things at pharmaceuticals, is the vast majority of people that work in marketing departments are women. 
Um, so I, I find that interesting that um, few media experts remember. But having worked in the BBC, I know how they effectively have this very small Rolodex. And whenever yeah. they're calling yeah. for an expert, yeah. it's the usual suspects. There's yes. an awful laziness that, that people just jump onto the internal database and call the usual suspects. That's why you see the same faces yes. on television. And it's laziness, and it's, it's a shame, and um, particularly when uh, with the internet, with Facebook, with Twitter, going online <gasps> and just, just asking no people on Twitter, who's the expert in the subject? Who's yes. got an interesting opinion? It's, yes, Yes, so so well, yeah, I'm very very keen to um to support the Women's Room Initiative because Definitely. I do think it could substantially change the the Rolodex, and um, I say this advisedly, the Boys Club. <laughs> I agree with you. I'm not disagreeing. But my uh, wife works in an engineering department at Imperial College, and uh, the lack. Uh, so I certainly do notice, particularly when it's an engineering or science based story, the lack of women. Yeah. Um, Susan Blackmore is basically probably the only yeah. recognisable woman, woman I think, who's who's called on. Yeah, so you know, interesting challenge yeah. using using digital technology to connect people in different ways. <laughs> Great. And um, and finally, a mention for the exploration on digital technology in later life, um, which we talked about last last time, which is led by David Wilcox, supported by the Nominate Trust, uh, because the exploration is ongoing, and so. It's a really interesting debate. So if you have thoughts uh, about this subject, do share them on the social learning website um, or through hashtag DT later. So that's my little summary. What about and we'll put you? All these, well, we'll put all these links on the website. So do, do remember, if you go to disruptorsocialcare.com, um, every time we post um, a show, we yeah. put extensive, put a lot of work into putting extensive notes in there and links to yeah. everything uh, that we've discussed. And 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 I have to say, I, I find I find the, the the show notes really helpful. You know, it, it enables me very quickly when someone says, "Oh, do you know about?" you know, this event, that conference, that report, uh, how easy it is to go <laughs> go to the show notes yeah. and, and, and tweet out the link. Incredibly, you know, my Rolodex, the Disruptive <laughs> Social Care Podcast. It is, it's an extensive list. It takes it's a lot of work to put together, so Absolutely. use it. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes. Um, so what about you, Stuart? Well, I did say that I've been locked in a room again for a couple of weeks. Um, uh, even more so Ian, who's locked in a dark room, hacking away at a keyboard. Uh, but there's a couple of key things that we've been doing. Um and one of them, I'm really excited about. I've got a toy to show you. Um, you mentioned the other week oh, yes. <laughs> that um, some people were missing seeing mindings on the table, which Absolutely, I, I, I yes. thought was a, a bit of an indulgence. I thought it was too much of a plug. Um, I, I'm sorry, I don't agree with you, <laughs> and I've missed it. <laughs> but I'll show you their new toy. <laughs> um, so here it is. Drum roll, a new toy. I don't, wow. I don't know if you can see that on the screen there. Certainly if you're watching it, this is going to make great radio. <laughs> it's the Amazon Kindle, uh, the new Amazon Kindle Fire HD. Wow. Um, which just came out, and uh, we went out and bought one straight away. And guess what? Mindings works on it. Perfectly, and Mindings app works on it. That is fabulous. Now, and, and it's so, you know, I, I mean, it's so clear, isn't it, There's, uh, on the it's screen? It's fantastic. I mean, this is as much of a plug for the Amazon Kindle as anything, and we're not being paid for this. But, yeah, I'm really impressed. I mean, for, a, for £159, it's a quality device. Um, you know, I know that Amazon are probably subsidising it by about fifty pounds, but it's yeah. a really sharp retina light display. Love very it. Very bright, and um, I'm really impressed by it. Um, so, if all, all else fails, we've now got something else for you to look at on the Disruptive Social <laughs> Care there you podcast. Go. So, have a look at that. So, uh, we've submitted our app to the Amazon App Store. It's already ah. on the, the Google Play yep. App Store, so it's yep. even easier to download. You can go and then down, download that. Um, How long did it take to sort of, you know, link it up with um, with the Kindle? Uh, oh, no time at all, because you just go into the web browser and you just go to minings.com forward slash yeah. apps and you download the app. Right. But it'll be even easier once we've got it connected to the Amazon Play Store, because you just, you know, there's a button on there to go to yeah. the Play Store, just type in mindings and download it. But there you go. Oh, <laughs> mummy. Now, this is uh, <laughs> uh, Facebook. Mummy, you're old because you have white hair and dye them like granny. Uh, which isn't the best thing to hear um, from your child at any time, but especially when it's said just a little bit too loud on a bus. Yes, I'm yeah, afraid my... they do, don't they? <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes and all that. <laughs> so that gave my dad a good laugh. There you go. Ah, uh, lovely. Um, so secondly, and uh, this has been the cause of the days in a dark room, um, we've added Instagram and Twitter integration to Mindings. Oh, Twitter integration. Yeah, so mm. we've moved on from just being a digital picture frame. We've so moved on from just being a digital picture frame. It's now supercharged with social media. Mm. So, um, oh yeah, and there's one more I thing. I love it. There's one more thing. 
uh, in true Steve Jobs style. Uh, there's one more thing that we've added: a bad language filter. Uh-huh. <laughs> Being mm. uh, with my my Scottish Presbyterian <laughs> background, <laughs> I just noticed a swear word on another day, and somebody on um, on Twitter on mine is, and I thought, "Oops, I don't really want my dad to see that." So um, we've just added a little filter so that if it's any swear words, it asterisks certain letters out. All right. There you go. How fascinating. So something for people find that useful, I hope. So there you go. So, Mindings on the Amazon Kindle, as well as any Android tablet or an iPad or an old computer, captioned pictures and text message, a really powerful multi-user shared calendar that works with iCal and Google Calendar, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, and a month free trial, it's the ultimate package. <laughs> what more do we need to convince I, people to sign up? I, I am so impressed. <laughs> and and I, I would like to add, I'm... Um, Stu has been going to give demos to big uh, organisations who provide a lot of care. So I'm sure if you would like Stu to come to your organisation, whether you're in social care, housing, health, um, then do get in touch with him. Bar mitzvahs, children's parties. (laughs) (laughs) That too. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) <laughs> so anyway, that's my plug. But sincerely, I, you know, we we'll, we'll put a heck of a lot of work into this, and we really believe oh. that the people working at some amazing tweets. I know. I, I, I mean, I've been following some of them, um, and I just think you know, every older person deserves um, to be on Mindings for Christmas. Yes, there you go. So we made it as easy as possible. Here you go, a lovely Amazon Kindle, <laughs> <clears throat> which you can obviously then get them into doing other stuff with as well, but Mindings runs on it. So there Excellent. You go. This section of the programme is called Follow Friday because it's Friday that we release the show and also because people who use Twitter use hashtag FF, Follow Friday, to recommend uh, people to their community. Well, before we start with our FFs for this week... Uh, what's your social media tip of the week? Hmm. I want to draw people's attention to two two um, posts. Um, the first one, five tips to grow Twitter followers the right way. And this is talking about how you connect with people uh, by following the right people, by building relationships, by engaging, responding, replying to tweets and sharing other people's content. And interestingly, I mean, I was talking about this with people on Twitter, they recommend following the 10 to 1 ratio. For every one content you share about your business or organisation, share 10 about what other people are doing. Don't just broadcast. Don't broadcast, don't talk at people, Mm. share good quality resources, information, and people will love you for it. Good. And so like I do every week on the show and I talk about mindings for a tenth of the show. Is that is that my ratio? <laughs> I'm allowed to talk about mindings for a tenth of the show. <laughs> yes, that's perfectly acceptable. It is, because we give lots of other people shout outs. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and um, a very amusing post at uh, Niall Harbison. This is brilliant. Uh, this is 15 ways that show your social media addic- addiction is getting out of control. I was off the chart. <laughs> Really, I wasn't, (laughs) I say, beaming happily. Um, Now, social media seems to be taking over a lot of our lives as we spend an increasingly large amount of time checking everything from Facebook to Twitter, um, all all while on the go. Um, And I have to admit, quite a few of us this weekend were busy checking whether we are really addicted. (laughs) And, and there was actually a, lo- a lovely tweet from um, at Jackie Cowley, who was commenting on you know lots of positives, I believe, with good shares, communication, information, and fun too. Um, but you know, I mean, just a word of advice: there there is a suggestion that possibly men shouldn't be taking too much of an interest in Pinterest. You may have read that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I, I was one of the ones. Do you take your phone into the toilet to check your Facebook page? <laughs> Uh, do you? Yeah. Do you? <laughs> I'm sorry about this, but chances are, if you ever get a tweet from me, probably it was when I was in the toilet. I, I mean, it's, it's good to share these personal insights, Stu, of course. <laughs> I share too much. <laughs> um, but but, but on to, on to um, recommended people to um, follow. And I concluded the other day, I mean, I love following people who have a passion and are committed to effecting change. And my first Follow Friday 
goes to James Patrick, who tweets as at J underscore AMESP. James is a serving police officer and he cares deeply about the importance of a police force which serves the public. He writes a powerful blog, Dangerous Ideas, which explores the impact of government policy on the police force and the need for accountability and transparency when decisions are made. And James is the author of The Rest is Silence, a must-read account of the background to police reform in the UK, the G4S scandal and a detailed exploration of the potential next political scandal which is waiting to happen because of conflicts of interests with funding of think tanks and ministers. It's a great post. It's a very, very powerful. Really and, and he produced The Last Call to Attention, which I have to admit is one of my favourite videos of 2012, Possibly because it's accompanied by Sympathy for the Devil by the Rolling Stones, <laughs> which I know is showing my age to you, but there you go. So, I, highly recommended. Fantastic. You didn't know Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds. <laughs> I know, I know. Sad, eh? <laughs> um, my second uh, Follow Friday is to at Karim S3D, who's a UK psychiatrist nudging, jabbing and prodding boundaries to untap potential. Now, Karim is the regional clinical lead for dementia, NHS West Midlands, and he has designed with his team a free online teaching aid to raise awareness of dementia. And this is aimed at year eight secondary school pupils. Definitely worth a look at. Such a good idea. Lovely post. Yes. Really behind us. Yes. It's great. Uh, my next um, Follow Friday for um, Frameworks for C, Andy Bradley is recognised as one of Britain's 50 new radicals. And the radical idea is that when we are feeling vulnerable, we should be able to rely on people to be kind. He spoke recently at TEDx Brighton about the importance of moving from compliance to compassion. And he's written a very challenging post about what lessons have we learned from Winterbourne. So, frameworks... Mission is to create and sustain consistently compassionate, caring environments. And I'm right behind him on this one. It's fantastic. It's a great post and the video is yeah. brilliant as well. We'll put Definitely you'll find the links yes. on, the, on the show notes for that. I totally recommend watching that. And, and because we're, we're, we're international in our approach, um, I have um, an FF4 at Cory Booker, who's the mayor of Newark, New Jersey. And this is for the way he has used social media to engage and respond to citizens' concerns about the impact of Hurricane Sandy. Real-time lessons, actually, for all elected politicians about presenting a human face which addresses practical concerns of citizens in a crisis. And, and interestingly, Corrie has been cited as one of the 20 most innovative people in Democracy 2012 by At TechCrunch. Well, uh, certainly that, that story uh, particularly touched me because my wife's from New York. Uh, my mother-in-law happened to be out in New York at the time. She was uh, in a school reunion uh, based up in uh, Westchester and she right. was going up to Vermont at the time. So she basically had the hurricane chasing her um, all the way up there. So it was shocking. And we, we have friends in New York City It was, um, and we have relatives uh, in New Jersey who lost power and stuff. Mm. And uh, I, I thought one of the most telling things, and certainly in terms of um, social media and the power and the importance of it in a crisis like that, the things that really hit me were, were um, Wi-Fi providers who just threw their networks open. Yes. yes. And they just made it free because yes. of the importance of people having that connection. And uh, I saw uh, some really touching images of people who would put um, charging stations on, they basically run an extension lead out into front yeah. garden with, yeah. with all sorts of iPod charger, iPhone chargers and things like that on there and just said free, free charge yes. your phone here because I've got power. I thought that was amazing. That was really great showing companies, organisations, communities, people coming together. Absolutely. Yes. Realising that importance of that connection during a time yes. of crisis. yes. Um, lots of lessons for us all, I think. Mm. Mm. And coming on to people sharing good information, um, uh, uh, a follow Friday for at Lestef, who runs Helpful Technology and produces the excellent Digital Engagement Guide, which offers ideas and practical help to use digital technology and social media across the public sector. Um, definitely worth a read. This should be in everybody's social media toolkit. Yes. And finally, for at Paul Bromford 
who is a great sharer of resources, constantly highlighting good posts and writing insightfully about the implications of social media for the public sector. Um, Paul's Twitter bio, customer experience, social enterprise, communications, gaming technology, innovation coach at Bromford, which is a socially savvy housing business. So Definitely my, agree with that. Paul is lovely. He Paul is. is often tweets offering help and advice and support and stuff. So a uh, big shout out to Paul. So, so, so those are my recommendations. What about yours, Stu? Well, I wanted to give a mention to the Royal British Legion uh, because it's Remembrance Sunday this Sunday and they do some great work uh, providing welfare, comradeship, um, representation and remembrance for the armed forces community. Yeah. And it's something that's uh, it's close to my heart because my wonderful paramedic sister, who I often mention, is, was a proud reservist um, and her husband is ex-army. And uh, as they do every year, they come down to the Festival of Remembrance at the Royal Albert Hall. Which is very moving. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Um, she, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big thing for them coming down. Um, but they're coming down as representatives of the, Ro- uh, the Royal British Legion Scotland Riders Branch. Right. Because they're bikers. Ah. They've got Harleys. <laughs> and this is an interesting <laughs> little offshoot of the Royal British Region, Legion, uh, where if you ever see them, they're amazing. But basically they turn up to ceremonies, you know, a hundred of them on their Harley Davidsons and their bikers gear. And, uh, and they um, bring off their support. Wow. Um, at, uh, I'll share a link. I'll put a link over them. Oh, do, it. yes. Um, they made an appearance at the Edinburgh Tattoo last year. Ah. And my sister was among them. And she had a camera mounted on her bike. Yeah. So she was filming it. And so they came out. It starts off from underneath Edinburgh Castle. And it comes out and onto the kind of the forecourt of the castle yeah. uh, as part of their tattoo and then they all do a big rev of the motorbikes it's, it's quite powerful um, but what else <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I also wanted to mention that because you can follow uh, r- the Royal British Legion um, at Poppy Legion which is a very nice Twitter handle and yep. this weekend they're doing something really cool um, yes using the noise of social media to create a two minute silence uh, yes they're, used, they're the first organisation to use a social media tool called Thunderclap uh, which allows Twitter and Facebook users to simultaneously, and it's automated, at 9am, send the same message. I'll be remembering the fallen at 11 o'clock. Hashtag two minute silence. Hashtag lest we forget. So Shirley, what do we have coming up in the next couple of weeks? Well, once again, a very diverse range of events, um, starting with using social media to change the world. A training event um, on the 20th of November being run by our very own our, um, at Mark 1 and 4. Excellent value, especially if you're new to social media and definitely worth attending. So we've got the link up to that. Definitely at Mark 1 and 4, one of the smartest people I've ever met, frankly. Absolutely. Uh, and incredibly effective in using social media. So, you know, what you've got is someone who really understands about social media and communication. And so, yes, so that's one thing definitely worth signing up for. Uh, And we've got at Third Sector Lab and the Glasgow Council for the Voluntary Sector are organising the annual Social Media for Social Good Conference on the 22nd of November. And this is where Scotland's third sector um, social media get together, uh, a day-long event which is packed with expert talks and workshops to help charities, community groups and social enterprises get the most out of social media. It's always a good event. I follow it online every year. And I'm delighted to see this year that um, at DCC Tayside is one of the speakers. Well, that, that was worth it. I was going to say price of admission. I don't know if it's a free event, but that's certainly no, worth it is, going. No, it is, it is a paid-for event, but, you worth know... Worth going for that alone, because he's, he's great. Some great insights from him. Absolutely. So, you know, to follow it, if you're not able to go using the hashtag, be good, be social. Um, I'm attending the launch of a new report, Nudge or Compel, Can Behavioural Economics Tackle the Digital Exclusion of Older People? Uh, which is happening on the 29th of November. And the report, which will be published by ILC UK, examines the factors which affect why older people do not get online, which is concentrating on behavioural choice. So it's going to be interesting. Um, You know, just close to 8 million adults in the UK have never used the internet, uh, and the vast majority of those are older people. So 
over two fifths of those who've never been online are over 75. And previous work from ILC UK has drawn attention to the nuances in why this digital divide continues. And worth reflecting when they were reporting in 2011 that for digital exclusion, factors such as psychological issues appear to be more influential than material factors such as cost or lack of physical infrastructure. Interesting. Mm, so fascinating. So that's um, that's my little summary of what's happening in the <laughs> in the near future. Great stuff. Well, uh, we've got a bit of time coming up. One of the things we are doing is we're making a new video. So hopefully, in the next few weeks, we'll have a, a new My News video. Uh, oh, excellent! We're, we're interviewing some users uh, who've been using Minders and have some interesting stories. Lovely. Yeah. Good. Look forward to that. Yeah. Well, you're going to be in it as well. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Delighted, <laughs> Stu, of course. You know this. <laughs> uh, and also, um, we've got an interview with Richard Humphreys from the King's Fund next week. Really looking forward to that. That'll be interesting. Oh, yes. Yeah. And uh, final note is basically it's a, a, an issue about funding. Um, two things, really. First of all is funding of mindings. Um, as you know, I've been listening to the show for the last few weeks, the problems we're having finding funding. Very disappointing email from my local MP the other day, who's actually a very well-known, very high-profile MP, um, who, when I wrote to ask uh, if she could help us get access to people, gave me a one-line reply saying, have you spoken with your local business forum? Pretty much that was all they said. So that was disappointing. And that's the very mm. problem, the very kind of person who should be well-connected, who should know where to get funding from. Um, and that's just the problem that we faced, and that's a bit sad. Yeah. Too too many too many funders, not collaborating, um, not promoting what's on offer, and as we've said before, there is a real deficit in in funding for enterprises such as Mindings, and I really do think people, the government, have got to sort this out because we desperately need an innovation culture and it needs funding properly. It certainly does. Um, and also, uh, so we'll be having the interview with Richard Humphreys next week, uh, which will be a cracker. Um, but beyond that, we're going to have a little break because um, yep. we will have had, I think, about 16 shows by the 15 shows by then. It's been a lot of work building it all together. Yep. But also, we've self-funded this up to this point. Um, as well as, as putting it together for nothing. So we're going to take a break because we're looking for some sponsors. So if there's people out there who are watching the show who think that we are uh, providing some good value, spreading the word about uh, innovation and social care and would like to be associated with the show, then get in touch. Absolutely. And if, if they do, we'll come back sooner. <laughs> <laughs> this is very true. <laughs> I think it would be really interesting to think we started this in June. Wow. Um, you know, we're now coming up to December. So a pat on the back for both of us, Stu, me thinks. I think so. I, well, I, I, as I say, I hope, I hope we're providing value to the community. Yeah, well, I think, I think all the feedback we get is saying definitely yes. So we just need some innovators and visionary, visionaries to join with us in making sure the show returns in the new year. So on that note. On that note, well, that's us from this week. Hope everyone enjoyed the show. And if you did... Please do spread the word. Um, come visit us at disruptivesocialcare.com. Come to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash disruptivesocialcare. If you are tweeting, use the hashtag, hashtag D-E-U-K-Care. Particularly if you're asking a question or making a point about something in social care. As I've said before, it's like the bat signal. If you use that, um, you'll get a response quicker. Yes. And it also flags it up and brings it to our attention as well. Absolutely, yes. So there you go. So you can follow me at Minding Stew. And you can follow me at Shirley Ayres. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>